Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we've got another video in our series about some of the admirals who commanded New Jersey. In today's video we're going to talk about Admiral Oscar Charles Badger, uh, who is actually the second Oscar Badger in the U.S. Navy. Uh, we're going to talk about his uh, service and uh, briefly about his time on board this vessel. Admiral Badger came from a naval family. Both his father and his grandfather had attended the U.S. Naval Academy at Annapolis. His grandfather, prior to the Naval Academy actually being called that. Uh, so before we get into uh, our As Oscar Badger, let's talk about his naval family. His grandfather's cousin, George E. Badger was briefly the Secretary of the Navy under President Harrison. When President Harrison died and was replaced by Taylor, uh, Badger resigned. His grandfather, also Oscar C. Badger, uh, was born in 1823, lived until 1899, and he served in the U.S. Navy during the Mexican-American War and the Civil War. Uh, he commanded a number of ships throughout his time. He served in both the Atlantic and the Pacific, uh, had a tremendous amount of wartime service. But uh, the most famous ship he commanded was the frigate Constitution. Uh, he commanded USS Constitution during her uh, travels to the Third World's Fair, uh, the, the Third Paris Exposition of the World's Fair. This would have been some point in the 1870s when Constitution was still sailing under her own power. He rose to the rank of Commodore. Uh, in the pre-Civil War Navy, Commodore was the highest rank attainable. And uh, it was generally more of a title than a rank. A captain of a ship who was then the senior most captain of an entire squadron of ships would be in charge of that squadron. At this time, the U.S. Navy didn't have admirals like other European navies, uh, and it was part of uh, this country's general dislike of uh, nobility and titles and that sort of thing. Uh, so even though the Army could have generals, which is their comparison, the United States didn't like the rank of admiral. Uh, all that changed during the Civil War. And the at that point, the rank of Commodore became less of a title and more of a rank, the lowest rank of Admiral, or the rank directly above Captain. And uh, the first two Admirals in the Navy, Farragut and Porter, were promoted. Nowadays, the rank of Commodore has been replaced and uh, has reverted to being a title again. So Commodore is roughly equivalent to a one-star admiral rank. It is the 07 rank, which nowadays we call rear admiral. Uh, but also the rank above uh, Commodore is also rear admiral. So one star would be Rear Admiral Lower Half, and two star would be Rear Admiral Upper Half. And the term Commodore now again refers to uh, somebody, the senior captain in a group of ships. Although nowadays that group of ships is generally homogenous, a group of four Arleigh Burke destroyers. Uh, they won't necessarily operate together but uh, they'll be grouped together administratively and for maintenance purposes, and because they're all the same design, there's, there's uh, a lot of commonality there. So, uh, depending on your metric, Oscar Badger the first, Commodore, means he attained flag rank, uh, as did his son and grandson. So his son, uh, Charles J. Badger, was around from 1853 until 1932, uh, and he attained the rank of admiral as well. And uh, he served during the Spanish-American War, 
and during World War I. And in between that time, he took part in the uh, American intervention in Mexico, the Veracruz uh, invasion, not to be confused with the earlier uh, Mexican-American War, Veracruz invasion. He was actually in charge of the Atlantic fleet when that happened. Meanwhile, his son, Oscar Charles Badger, uh, named after his grandfather, was uh, an ensign newly out of the United States Naval Academy. The younger Badger had served in, uh, excuse me, had uh, lived in the District of Columbia, and uh, because you need an appointment by a congressman or representative to go to the military academies, uh, and District of Columbia does not have that, uh, he was personally appointed by President Theodore Roosevelt. So he goes to the Naval Academy, he graduates as an ensign and is serving on board the battleship Utah. Uh, Utah serves during the uh, incursion into Veracruz and uh, Ensign Badger is appointed to lead a shore party of uh, sailors and Marines as part of this expedition. And he is one of 55 uh, sailors and soldiers and Marines who are awarded the Medal of Honor for their actions during that event. Uh, so for his conspicuous gallantry on April 21st and 22nd, 1914, he earned the Medal of Honor. Following our Mexican incursion, the United States enters World War I, and Badger is sent to Europe with the destroyers. And he would serve on a couple of ships during this period, and uh, eventually rose to command the destroyer Warden, uh, during which time he earned the Navy Cross, the second highest award a member of the Navy can win. His interwar service was fairly standard. Uh, he served on just about every type of combatant vessel you can think of. He has a lot of sea time under his belt, uh, commanding destroyers, uh, serving on cruisers and battleships. He, he was something of a gunnery expert. Uh, and uh, in 1941, he was promoted on October 23rd to be captain of the relatively new battleship North Carolina. Uh, and he would command her until June of 1942. After he leaves the battleship North Carolina, he becomes the commander of destroyers in the Atlantic Fleet. Uh, and then he's sent to command the service squadron in the South Pacific. Uh, and uh, the South Pacific area closes out relatively quickly and Task Force 58 is thrown together. And Badger is made the commander of Battleship Division 7, which comprises the brand new fast battleships Iowa and New Jersey. Battleship Division 7 is originally commanded from Iowa, which was the only member of the class fitted out as a fleet flagship. She has an extra habitable level of her conning tower, uh, which left New Jersey available to be Admiral Spruance's flagship, and then later Admiral Halsey's flagship when 5th Fleet becomes 3rd Fleet. Badger would later become the first naval officer to set foot on Japan after the war, he would go on to be promoted to command naval forces uh, far east, and he would hold that, uh, that position while China fell to communist forces. Uh, later, he would be promoted to naval forces Western Pacific, and then uh, would command the 11th Naval District and the Eastern Sea Frontier. Uh, he retired from the Navy in 1951, and uh, from 1952 to 1953 was the commander of civil defense. All of the Badgers uh, have ships named after them. The Secretary of the Navy, the Commodore, uh, Charles Badger, and our uh, Admiral Badger. Uh, they, they each have at least one ship named after them, uh, all destroyers and frigates. And then there was uh, FF... 1071, which was named USS Badger in honor of all of the Badgers. However, 
it was christened by our Badger's wife, uh, and she christened it in honor of her husband, Oscar Charles Badger II. Uh, so technically it's named for all of them, but it's christened just in his honor. Uh, and that, that is a Knox class frigate, one of McNamara's folly. She was in commission from 1970 until 1991. So, there you have it. Admiral Badger has an extremely distinguished career throughout several official wars and conflicts. During his time, he would serve on the cruiser Indianapolis, uh, more destroyers than I can name here, and the battleships Arizona, Maryland, Maine, Minnesota, North Carolina, uh, and Iowa and New Jersey as flagships, at a minimum. There's probably some other ones I'm even forgetting here. He earned the Medal of Honor and the Naval Cross, uh, and honestly, I'm embarrassed to say, besides the fact that he commanded Battleship Division 7, of which New Jersey was a member, I had never heard of the man or any of his accomplishments prior to researching this video. So, be sure to research some of the lesser known admirals you see in the books. Their records will astound you. Again, this is part of a series on admirals that we are producing. We'll probably release a new one once or twice a month. And these are specifically admirals associated with this vessel. We're releasing this video today because it's the anniversary of Admiral Badger's death. He, like his father, is buried at Arlington National Cemetery, and you can go and visit his gravesite today if you want. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, uh, have any fun stories about any of the USS Badgers or uh, knew the Badger family, let us know in the comment section down below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe because we try to post new videos several times a week. And uh, by doing that, you get notified when new content becomes available. The museum is funded partially by a grant from the New Jersey Department of State and also by viewers like you. If you're interested in supporting the museum and our YouTube channel, there's a link in the description below that'll take you to our GoFundMe campaign. Anything you donate to that comes directly back into what we do here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.